ledger and that it has a lot of business intelligence which would be in interesting to an insurance company, which would be interesting to the, the um, um, superintendent, it would be interesting to the bank, um, it would be interesting to a lot of people. So they would actually buy the tokens in order to access that database. Okay, so you're creating a market. Now this is something we learned at Boeing years ago. We're trying to get the younger students, they had, they had a big gap between the seniors and the, and the younger, student, younger engineers. And how do they fill that 20 year gap? Well, it, you had the older engineers were protecting their job because they were worried about the younger kids. And yet the younger kids, they wanted to be CEO tomorrow without you know, going through all the hard work of, of, of rising to the ranks. So you had this disincentive happening. What we did is we created a market a market where they compare, where they share information with each other. And that's how we were able to close that information gap. So in, in a way, we're trying to do the same thing here with these tokens. So I'm not going to go too deep into this, um, but if you, if you look at how engineers are, are very intimately connected to finance, they're intimately connected to insurance, you can't get a certificate of occupancy without the engineering stamp, you cannot finance the project without the certificate of occupancy, you can't, or, or whether uh, other uh, memorialization, and you can't get insurance unless those engineers are vetted and, and, and living within a, uh, a regulatory system of their own right. So we call that a production function. You have a claim of validation of material fact on the blockchain going into this production function, which is the interaction between these three bodies. And these are the sorts of events that we would try to memorialize on a blockchain. The site surveys, performance, title reviews, permits, uh, calculations, the application of sensors, where they are, who's calibrating the sensors, um, the critical path, the qualifications of the people working on it, statements of work, peer review, revision history, chain of custody. If you had all those sorts of things, these points of risk transfer memorialized on the blockchain, you could track them better and you get, everybody can audit them better. And that's where we see a, a tremendous amount of friction being removed. That's where we see how a decentralized body of individuals can actually simulate a highly integrated corporation. Okay, so this is, I'm not sure if, you, if you're holding on to what I'm saying so far, but it's, we're, we're trying to use this tool as, as a way of, of increasing the efficiency, removing the friction in our interactions. So let's review, um, where were we? Areas where design builds struggles, timely decision making. Okay, well if you have this big clock that's putting a cadence on everything, then you're not really in force pushing somebody to make a decision quickly. What you're doing is you're evening out the distribution of, of decisions. One person isn't making a super fast decision, and another person doesn't have to make a super, isn't making a super slow decision. It's like evening out the cash flow in your, in your accounts receivables. It's, this is what that would do for your, now your decisions are being made on a very timely and predictable manner. That's where you get your efficiencies, not from hurrying somebody up. It's from all of everybody doing it on a nice, predictable cadence. Competing priorities among stakeholders without someone that can pick the direction and move forward. Well, again, you've got this blockchain which is enforcing this event is going to happen. This event is audible. Something else can't happen until this event occurs. So you've got this the structured motivation of this big data logger going tick-tock and getting everybody aligned. Um, setting unrealistic expectations with stakeholders where you can create a rule that says that you have to do your, you have to have a feasibility study before you can make a cost change or, or you have to have a, a, this, this, this calculation checked by another engineer before it can be accepted into the structure. And these are all um, things that you can program into the blockchain. Um, so the pace of design and construction at odds with permitting and agency review and approval. Well, you can, you can synchronize those things on the blockchain. At least you can see them coming, and you can synchronize your events around them. Um, lack of discussion and ownership. So everybody is, is audible. Everybody is transparent. Everybody can see it. So there's a strong incentive to make sure this thing is going to be done correctly. There's, there's, so a lot of conversations are very difficult to have. You know, when there's a conflict, it's very difficult to face a conflict, but you sometimes have to have that conflict in order to get over to the other side onto a decision. Well, if this is being tracked and this is being noticed, um, it's going to, everybody's going to be more willing to have a resolution uh, occur in a timely manner. Um, contract and not providing enough information for a full picture, well, that information, if it's not on the, on the blockchain, you know early. You don't know later, oh, we're at the end of the project and you forgot that. Well, you know early, people can, anybody can call out a, a, um, something that's, that hasn't been um, a, a, an omission, so to speak. Um, 
The owners figure that things will work out. The contractor has uh, all the risk. Well, the owner can review the database too. The owner can, can look at the trends. The owner can now have um, visibility over what's happening on the project. And they can, um, and, and if you have um, a transfer of risk is your idea, well then you're right. The contractor does have the risk. Does the contractor want the risk is now the question. And now that changes a lot of the incentives. Um, designers uh, overselling what can be done within the constraints of the project. Well, these are all programmed into the, into the system. So what I'm trying to get at is that things can change. It's, it's a very, very important tool. Um, it simulates what we're doing already. It's not this newfangled thing. It's a computer doing this clumsy thing to simulate what we're already doing. And that clumsy dance can be improved so that it helps us. It's our tool. It's our, it's our, um, it's our servant. It's, it shouldn't be our master. This is the problem that we're seeing with all the hype around blockchain going to save the world. It's not. It's a tool. But we have to figure out how to use it. Nobody's going to be doing this for us. Okay, it's not in anybody's best interest that we organize because they want to, you know, organize for us. You know, uh, Amazon wants the eight trillion dollar construction business. Business, I'm, I'm sure of it. I mean, there's, it's, it's a huge, huge piece of, of value that's just exposed, and, and we're the ones that have to fill the efficiencies. Uber's not doesn't care about the taxi drivers. Okay, so it's up to us, and I know it's complex. I see some eyes rolling. I see some eyes, some heads nodding. But we can do this. We're the smartest people in the room. Um, we can figure this out. It's not rocket science. Um, so we can make these timely decisions. We can resolve competing priorities. Um, we can start earlier, increase transparency. So I can go through all these bullet, bullet points. Um, it's really easy to identify unvalidated claims. If somebody makes a claim and nobody else validates it, that's like fake news. Okay, so there's a use case right there. Um, if you don't have a validated claim, it, it doesn't exist. It doesn't go forward. So these are all rules that you can easily close up, loopholes you can, you can close up if you're smart. Um, so additional benefits is mobile credentials and certification. So when you have, uh, the, you know, everybody gets the same electricians from Union Hall, everybody gets the same, um, yeah, how, how do you know everybody's, uh, how, the credentials are correct? How do you know that, that I'm not lying on my resume? How do you know I have a, a degree in engineering? Well, I just told you I had a PE, but did you actually check? Are you gonna check? Probably not. I mean, so, but it's a mobile credential and certification system. I can put all my experience on a blockchain, and it's immutable. It's been validated by the sources. So, so I can't go backwards in time to change that. So you can issue a job application and ask for my resume yesterday so that I can't change my resume to meet your job application. Okay, that's a pretty handy trick. Because everybody's out there, you know, writing their resume to meet the job. You say, give me yesterday's resume. And that now I'll let you read today's child application. And that solves a lot of problems, okay? So knowledge asset liquidity, it allows um, for engineers and, and, and contractors and people to, to and individuals, each one of us, to go from different company to different company. I mean, companies like Bechtel, they have a big problem. When they ramp up a project, they have to hire all these people, and that puts a lot of stress on their existing workforce. And when they have to lay off, when they finish the project, they've got to lay off all these people. That, put, that externalizes a lot of risk on society. Why can't they just borrow engineers from, from Arab and, and just kind of switch, switch them around and, and make that? They don't do this, but that capability does exist. It can be done if you can keep track of knowledge asset liquidity. Um, it's a giant data logger. It's just collecting data. That data is tremendously valuable. It can be used in AI. It can be used in IoT. That is the most valuable thing you have, is your data. And there's people out there who are really, really happy to take it from you and analyze it for you and sell you all kinds of things from it. And that's your biggest asset. Why are you giving it away? Why aren't you tracking it? Why aren't you noticing this stuff? Why aren't you analyzing it? There's tremendous business intelligence in, in that if you can just measure it. So this allows you to perform quantitative and qualitative analysis on who you are and what you represent. Um, the analysis of the metadata, you can power visualization tools. You, I mean, it just goes on and on. This whole wave of new technology coming along is so data inten intensive, if you don't have the data, you're just going to miss out. And somebody else is going to do it for you. Um, artificial reality, IoT, artificial intelligence, they're, they're just moving at the speed of light. It's a train barreling down the highway. Um, and that's pretty much all I have to say. We have, um, I, I'm the owner of Co-Engineers. Uh, I'm still a, um, a practicing engineer. 
Um, I think uh, there's a few questions. I think one of our biggest challenges is doing this, um, paying attention to this, um, investing some time, not all your time, but some time into this um, to learn how to use it. And I expect phone calls tomorrow morning. Okay, that's how fast we need to be doing this. Not, oh, I'll catch you at the next conference. No, no, this is, this is really going too fast. So we want to be able to bring the group together. I'm meeting with Eric in a little while. We've brought on, we've got a big, uh, big push in Jacobs. Um, we, we're working with, on WSP. We've got um, the ASCE, the, NG, the NSPE is going to be a witness, one of the witness nodes to our blockchain, the National Association of Finite Element Analysis Engineers. They're going to, they want to take the data and do important stuff with it, but they, don't, they need the data of something. You guys create the data. Another group of engineers are going to analyze the data, but we all have to work together, and we've got this tool called the blockchain, which allows us to actually work together. Okay, so these are, this is the future, this is the, the vision that I'm trying to, um, to, to communicate to everybody. So we have been vetted, we've won the contest, we have published the seminal papers. We are, we are the experts. So in, we're in Seattle. So I, I really hope to be, to, to take advantage, the, the people here can, will take advantage of this, this, this knowledge asset inventory that we represent. Our people in IEBC are global. Um, they're from all over the world in different professions, and um, it's a great team, and we'd like to make it bigger. So that's my information. Here's a disclaimer, because your lawyer said so. Um, <laughs> and then here's another one. I mean, nobody asked to solve this problem. I mean, this is just nuts. Bechtel didn't build that tunnel. <laughs> I mean, a rocket company built that tunnel. I mean, I mean you don't need ventilation because the car's electric. Come on. I mean, this is just amazing what's happening and how fast it's happening. Um, and that goes, that, that's sort of extended slides, but that's, that's where I'll leave it, um, right there. Are there any questions? Can I, can I answer any questions for, for folks? Yes? So if you were to set this up for a particular project, does every player within that project need a programmer in order to follow blockchain and use it and set the rules and that sort of thing? Well, we have a blockchain that we've built and we're using that as our model. Okay, so we're using that as our, and you're, you're, it's, it's, our, it's our template. We're, we're, we're practicing, we're learning. Uh, we will probably start with something loose hanging fruit like credentials. Everybody put their credentials on the blockchain, see how that works. Okay, and then you, you figure out all the different ways you can use that in the project. Next project we do credentials plus um, certifications. Okay, and then next step we do credentials plus certifications plus uh, work statement. Okay, so we'll, we would slowly, I mean, we do, we're engineers. I mean, we're not going to just jump into anything, you know, we're going to test it. Um, so that's kind of how we would approach it. We wouldn't deep dive and go into a, into a you know, detailed blockchain application. Because, again, it's like, you know, people ask, how come there's no innovation at Boeing? And I heard Boeing executive says, well, you want the airplane that worked last time to work next time. I mean, that's why there's no innovation that you can't see and hold in your hands. It worked great. Don't change it. So in, in our world, things do go boom. People can get hurt. So we want to be very, very careful. Blockchain, we should be running it parallel to our existing design build community and figuring out what works and what doesn't. So it's not a wholesale replacement. I, I would strongly recommend a parallel application. But we need these projects. We need, these, we need it to be a part of the contract. We need owners who are willing to, to uh, look at this experiment to participate. We're looking at contractors who are willing to absorb some overhead it's very little. Again, we, we built, you know how we built it? We cloned one. We found one that worked really good. We just copied the source code and started running it. It's not, it's not hard. I mean, it really isn't hard. It's the, implica it's the social consensus which is hard. The computer consensus is easy. It's the social consensus which is hard. And this is what's holding blockchain back. It's not the computer consensus. You got that all day long. And the applications of the blockchain are going to be where you get a computer set consensus cheap. And they're going to be using it to remove all the pesky brokers and real estate agents who want free stuff. There's two ways. Blockchain is like a, a, a me mechanism. It's going to, a mechanization. It's like the, the cotton gin. It's going to eliminate all these workers. Or there's the other side of blockchain, which is all the new, new to the world applications. We want to, to talk about the new to the world applications. We don't, we're not about replacing, you know, administrators. That's, somebody else can do that. Fine. We're, we're, going to, we're over here. Is that help? I mean, okay, it helps. You know, that's our purpose, our intent. Any any more questions? Yes, sir. Uh, 
strikes me that there might be a way that this would be relevant for uh, payment on projects. You know, right now the payment is very clunky, it's very manual, it takes months, you know, for, for people to put together a billing, for the billing to be validated, for people to get paid, and then for other people to be paid exactly down, <clears throat> downstream. And if, if there's a way that this is more, I don't necessarily want to say real time, but yeah, that toilet was hung and you get paid for that, you know, right now, that there's sort of this constant cash flow. Ab absolutely. Um, but the point you made that toilet was hung is validating the physical you have to state. Validate, yeah. Okay, so you can do payments all day long, you can yeah. throw money everywhere you want, like Bitcoin, but you still have to validate that physical state. That's the hard part. Yeah. But you're right, the payments can be made fast, instantaneous, frictionless, without cost. I mean, it would cost me more money to 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 um, you know, to, to I could I could send you if I had to give you ten thousand bucks. It would cost me less money to send it on, on UPS than for you to, to give you a check. Because there's fees, and, and the bank will take all these fees. So you can eliminate all those transaction fees. All those, uh, you know, that's very expensive um, to do. Now, the payments are interesting because part of the things we tested in my company were a bunch of independent engineers. We're all indies. So we all worked, he's got certain skills, I got certain skills, we worked together on projects. So it was turning out where three or four engineers would work together a lot in a month and would be like, I owe you 600 bucks, you owe me 1,500 bucks. You so we just started giving each other these chits. And at the end of the month, we would just reconcile. Okay, so you're not actually trading money, you're trading these tokens. And then at the end of the month, you say, okay, I'm your net 1,500 ahead, so I owe you $1,500. And that reconciles everybody. Now that smooths up transactions, that smooth increases velocity at an astonishing uh, rate. And we did this out of necessity because we're Indies, we don't have accountants, we don't have lawyers. We have, to do, we have to do it that way. So there's a lot you can do in the area of payments, a tremendous amount. Now the only caveat is they're not reversible. In order to reverse a payment, you have to write another contract which cancels that payment and do over. So that's kind of, that eliminates the lawyers. Okay, frankly, because that's, you know, in, in the real world, there's nothing that can't be undone. There's no transaction that can't be undone. There's no lawsuit which can't revert the payment back to the owner. Okay, when you eliminate that possibility, you really cut off that whole spectrum until, unless it really is real bad, I'm sure that they would override it. But if you make, if you make that harder to do, then um, the incentives throughout change. I mean, you would be amazed at how incentives changed when, when you make it harder to revert a transaction. Yes? Uh, what sources did you recommend uh, to learn more about blockchain and its connection to everything AEC? Um, I would recommend going to our websites personally because we're the ones publishing on these things. Um, the paper for the, for the NSPE block, um, blockchain paper was 2005, and you go back and read that thing, and it's like, oh my goodness, how did we see it? It's, it's really, really, back then it was, we, it was even over our heads, and we were writing it. But now it's like, wow, this, this makes a lot of sense. So as the knowledge, your knowledge increases, all these old writings are going to become, make more sense. If you have no knowledge and you start reading this stuff, it just goes over you. But now you've got an idea. You've seen it happen. You've seen the crash. You've seen the hype. You've seen the noise. Um, you've seen the vendors out there pitching these, this snake oil. And now you go read the blockchain and say, oh, well, that makes sense. And, and you know, assume that you are an engineer as well and, and the fact that you're a maker of useful things. It, it favors makers of useful things, especially in the area of, of, you know, you have to validate the physical state. I mean, if you look at the 2007 financial crisis, that occurred because the value of these, of these homes and these assets was divorced from the, from the, the, the security that was, that was representing it. That's all that happened. So it marked to market. If it was able to mark to value, if there was a database where engineers and construction managers had gone out and, and, and written the, the actual physical value of these assets, you can avert a financial crisis because that data didn't exist. And it got divorced. So we're the ones holding it all together. And we just don't realize it. We're the ones, you know, printing money, literally. We just don't realize it. And it's ours to it's ours to capitalize on. Any any more questions? Is your white paper uh, available on that Oh yes, everything is open source. We have a white paper um, from the NSPE 
the white paper we wrote for the actual application co-engineers. Okay, so let me write this down. It's um, IDPC.co and coengineers.io are the two websites. Coengineers.io, that is um, the foundation which is developing the blockchain. The, into the, great, uh, the blockchain consortium is the group of, of industry leaders that we're bringing forward to design and help us prioritize your use cases. What are your use cases? How are we gonna, we're going to test them? So th those are the two organizations that we have up there. And everything is, is, is on those two. There's videos, um, there's this, the talk we gave at the ASCE, there's a, um, we've given a bunch of lectures. I'm, I'm videotaping this one and, and hopefully this will, will go up, up somewhere as well. But we're trying, it's, it's, we're trying to educate people and bring on uh, more partners to, uh, to study this stuff um, and then share the outcome. You know, we're all sharing it. You know, it's hard to get Jacobs and, and you know, uh, uh, and, and Arab to agree to, to work together. But they're willing to do it. There's really nothing that says they can't. There's really nothing that says we can't collaborate. I mean, except this fictional segmentation that's been imposed on us. And now we can disintegrate that. That's pretty amazing. So is there maybe one more question? Or are we? So I know the very first time I heard about this, the very first time we talked um, on the phone, I looked like that emoji with your head exploding. <laughs> I was like, Whoa, this is too much. How do we do this, right? But I think part of, you know, at one point, design build was something that somebody threw out there and thought, whoa, head exploding. And it's really that sitting down and thinking about it and thinking through some of the applications, like the payment or drawings. What if an architect couldn't change the backgrounds once they gave it to you without daylighting everything? There's just a lot of different things that we can think about. So, you know, this is the charge to go back and say, wow, I got exposed to something big and different and maybe think through it and think about things because we're the people who are going to change the direction of our industry. So thank you very much, Dan, you. for your time today. So next month, we're going to go in the opposite direction, and we're going to go to Design Build 101. So um, as you look at registering and who's going to come in, um, Kent or uh, Bill and Robin have graciously volunteered who teach a ton of Design Build classes to do sort of a boot camp 101. And so we look forward to seeing you at that event in February. Thank you.